à tous. Good morning. You're here because you believe that the world can and must change. I'm sorry, I have a problem here with my slides. Okay, well, Anne Garon's partner, Climate Change and Sustainable Development Department, KPMG. You're here because you think that the world can and must change. Now, you have to look into your business project and take the risk, if you don't do that, to disappear. How can you review your model, your business model? Let's see what happened in the 90s and 2000s. It was sustainable development at that time was a concept people didn't know much about. At that time, people thought it was only centered on communication. We already had breakthroughs concerning sustainable development. We had nice films and images, but there wasn't much in terms of vision, long-term vision and strategy. Now, what happened in the 2000, 2010? What happened at that point in time? Well, at that point in time, it was risk management, which was the most visible concept because many regulations, the Kyoto Protocol, for instance, on the climate, the protocol on chemical products, but also the development of soft low, like, for instance, the Global Reporting Initiative, started, but it was also at that time when we had all these cases, dramatic cases with Mediator, that uh, drug, the uh, labor of young children at Nike. So at that point, we started becoming aware of the fact that we live in a world where resources are not uh, are limited and restricted, and therefore that we have to be careful and take care of the environment. In 2015, where are we standing? What are the changes? Now, this is my slide. In 2015, we're at a crossroad. We're at a crossroad on one hand, Two good news, two good pieces of news. 95% of the international major groups are communicating on sustainable development. Second good news, the European Commission has embedded this concept in the action plan for 2011 and 2012, and therefore believes that this concept can be an alternative for the crisis. Bad news now, because I said we were at a crossroad. This subject is still not completely embedded in the strategy of the businesses and companies. For more than 15 years now that I have been coaching companies and working hand in hand with uh, uh, the managers for climate change and sustain sustainable development. This is my mind map where I have tried to reflect the options we have for the forthcoming 20 years. To start with, I think that we have to review the concept we have of value. What is the value of a company? It's not only financial. We have to make sure we know what are the extra financial parameters and then bring this into the company. It's part of the value of the company. This means a just value or true value, the true value of the company. And now we're going to see a small film which is very explicit. True value works through the example of a mobile phone manufacturer. This manufacturer earns revenue by selling the phones it assembles. After deducting its costs, it is left with its financial earnings or profit. But what about the value the corporation creates for society? For instance, it creates economic value by providing jobs and paying taxes that support the economy. 
The corporation also creates a great deal of social value by making phones that enable people to communicate, providing its factory workers with healthcare services and education adds to this. But by paying low wages and through health and safety incidents, it reduces social value. Then there's environmental value, which the corporation creates by using some renewable materials and recycling some of its waste. But by using up scarce resources and water supplies and by producing carbon dioxide and waste, this value is reduced again. When we quantify societal value in financial terms, we get a much more complete picture of value creation than financial data alone can give. Find out more about your organization's true value. Go to kpmg.com slash true value. Well, let's come back to our mind map. As you can see here on this visual where there were subtitles. I'm sorry, there were French subtitles. Well, uh, I'm sorry because you don't have uh, French subtitles in the film we've just seen. But there was a translation into French. Now, second point now, coming back to what I was saying. Today, we're faced with a moral major disruption. We have citizens on one hand who are looking for more meaning, more values, but also institutions like school, the family, all of these are concerned. Uh, they want to be acknowledged. And the state today, who was a guarantee, doesn't seem to play its role thoroughly and due to this moral disruption or breach the company has to understand and will understand that it will become a major political partner and therefore the company has to review the business project third point i wanted to mention which I think is crucial at this stage, is what can we do now that we're faced to world challenges, economic, environmental, social challenges? What can we do? Well, what about this uh, profit uh, policy all about? Can we continue? trying to get more profit. Well, we can only do this if we really are concerned about general interest. That is to say, what society is all about. What does this mean? That means that we have to make sure we know what are the positive contribution of the company for the overall interest and embed in this strategy or policy some of these challenges. This means a very thorough analysis when it comes to the different challenges a business is confronted to. I'll give you some examples at world level. Climate change is one of the first challenges we're going to be talking about a lot in 2015, but also scarcity of natural resources, demographic uh, uh, increases, but we also have other challenges in different sectors, the access to health care, the uh, residues uh, management, and the precarity of young people or the difficult situation young people are going through. Let's just consider this specific point from a social point of view. I think it could be interesting so as to reverse the trend and avoid having these dramatic situations cropping up. Employ people who are on the streets, who are dropouts. Why can't we offer them a contract, a long-term contract, maybe provide them with decent wages so as to help them to be part of our society? Now, if you had to choose between two companies, one who has this social approach and the other one who just doesn't care, which company would you choose? I think that uh, the answer is obvious. And just to wrap up, I would like to say that in the forthcoming 20 years, 
and in the present, our leaders, our CEOs, will have to be ambassadors of these projects. They will have to be accountable for these projects. On the other hand, I think that the leaders and CEOs of our companies have to give the example from an ethics point of view. This is going to be a major constraint. And the third aspect is that leaders have to instore dialogue with the in-house partners, but also external partners, so as to be in line with the needs and the expectations of our society. Thank you very much.